function after Holy Communion with the pastors. The Apostle Paul calls a conference of pastors uh, in Ephesus. It was his last meeting with them, and in that conference, he makes a few statements, and the one we all love most is 24, verse, uh, Acts 20, verse 24, when Paul says, in every city, that is uh, verse, from verse 32, where I go, the Holy Spirit, pro through prophets, confirms that trouble and death are waiting for me. And I'm going to Jerusalem there, bound by the Spirit, knowing that nothing nice awaits for me. He even says, those who see my face today will never see it again. So the context, what I call, the context was the Apostle Paul gave a confirmation from the Lord himself and by the Holy Spirit to the prophets about his going to Rome, his, his arrest, and finally uh, how he will how he will, he will die. But he says a few things that I want to say to you, not to make you feel guilty, but from verse 27. I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Now what Paul says is, I told you everything I know about the will of God. I did not keep something and say, this one is for the bigger crowd. This one is for, uh, uh, no. Every time when I speak to you, I spoke like someone who's going to die the following day. Why? Because my eye was on succession. So that those who follow after do not have to ask where are we supposed to go and how to go there. That's not the key. The key verse is the next one. Therefore, take heed to yourself. You see? Take heed to yourself. So the nice best. The nicer one will say, take care of others. Or forget the name. Here it says, watch out for yourself. You are very dangerous. This self can take you either way. The self can make you feel too important or too useless. So watch out for the self. The self can love things that are useless and hate things that are useful. Yourself, not others. Uh, let's move on. Over yourself, not only yourself, and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Who made you overseers of, uh, who made you overseers it says here, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, this sets you free from a lot of public opinion. There will always be people who don't see your worth. But don't be one of them. There will always be people who undermine your capabilities. Don't be one of those people who undermine your own capabilities. There will always be people who think you do not qualify as if they qualified you. Don't be one of those people. It is the Holy Spirit. The church is the body of Christ. In the morning, I said to you, we are all senior members. But let me emphasize this. The way the church looks at you as the overseer is correct but don't take that view and make it yours see yourself a senior worshiper a senior intercessor and a senior preacher and a senior member that in the body of Christ I am under Christ therefore I am a member to them I am the head the leader and they are right but to myself, I'm just their senior. I'm under Christ. And that's very important. It will keep you from falling to pride and thinking that I'm a young girl. I'm a young girl. 
and then end up falling into some 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 useless uh, threats. That the Holy Spirit made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Shepherds and overseers of the church of God. This is the highest commendation God can give to any minister. It is God who calls you an overseer. In other words, a bishop. But you are bishoping a private company. You are a bishop who has been deployed by the senior bishop, Christ himself. See yourself correctly. It is true that God has used us to train you, pray for you, to give you whatever we can do. But we don't see ourselves as owners. I'm only an employee in the church of God. As, and as a result, I don't want the day I disappear, anyone to lose the way. You must look back and say, thank God there was a human being among us. Now I know who I am, I know where I'm going. I don't need uh, that one to rise from the dead to come and show us where to go. By the way, I'm not going to die. God didn't tell me. He said he's going to tell me when I die, I'm dying. So relax. I'm not sick, I'm very well. So I'm not going to die anymore. Even if I do, God will be, God will be a big tail train smash. I can't see why I'm here. You are here. So God has trusted you. And so the Apostle Paul is saying a few things here. And this, this was uh, during uh, or the final Holy Communion. If you look at uh, verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the weight of his grace, who is able to build you up and give you inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Then he goes on to say, I have not desired your money or clothes or gold. Yes, you yourself know that these hands have provided for my necessities and, and for those who were with me. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of our Lord Jesus uh, that, he, that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Theologians agree that this is the only verse that doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. I think Paul heard from the Lord's mouth because there's no verse that he, yeah, there's no verse in anywhere in the Bible where the Lord Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. So Paul was quoting the Lord, not a verse. That the Lord said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So as we partake of Holy Communion, uh, ministers, I want us to keep this in mind that the work you are doing is the work of God. And there will be so many things that will try to shake you. And there are so many people who will try to undermine what you are doing. But remember who appointed you. And be strong. Some things are difficult. I remember pastors when I was two, two years ago when there was a problem with their daughter who was telling her that she can't tell me anything because she does not have my education. I mean, that kind of attitude, I mean, it's just that. But one day your kids can tell you that. Yes, the people who raised up, how could they say, who do you think you are? When I want a master's, in Ghana, I'm a master's. I come and I see if you You feel like, you feel heart stopping a little bit. And so those things do happen. The immature, the ignorant, and those, the, the misguided, they may not see you for who you are. They may think they can do a better job than you, not knowing that you have been anointed for this and they are not. You are here because of the divine anointing. So don't forget the thing that links you to Christ. It is his hand, finger pointing at you and setting you up. You don't know everything about anything. You can't know everything. And don't claim to know everything. But that which God has given to you,
to share with the people of God, be faithful and be consistent in doing it. Be faithful and be consistent in doing it. Don't undermine yourself because some people seem to be ahead of you. It's normal in the journey of development. To have people ahead of you, people next to you, people behind you, it's normal. So, as a minister, remember the sources of your office. And when your office is challenged, don't defend it. Leave it to God. Learn to look away from those who want to bring arguments that don't even need you. If anybody's got a problem with you being a minister, let them go and question the Lord who ordained you. So I'm saying this to you often as we as we get into Holy Communion and, and in the beginning of the year as ministers, that uh, we 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 cannot ignore the following things. One, the Lord has told us that the gospel is going to be attacked. When the attack on the gospel comes, don't become discouraged. Number two, the Lord told us that people will attack us. People will attack us. People will attack us. You know, something just come to my spirit now. I'm going to say it. I'm trying to, to link it, but I, I can't link it. Uh, that is, I think it's only in Revelation where God says and the devil will attack you. Are you aware that the attack that's guaranteed is from people? Matthew 10, 17, beware of people. And people are the ones you are working with in the team, the ones outside. The, uh, people are believers and non-believers. So when people become hostile against you, before you overreact, remember the Lord's word. People will attack you. It is specify believers or unbelievers. It's more shocking and painful if it's believers who try to pull you down. But remember the Lord didn't say non-believers will pull you down. He said people. We know the attack of the devil. And for those who know the Lord, Satan does not want to fight you directly. He will push people to attack you, to undermine you, to make you feel useless. So learn human nature. People can be easily used by the devil, by other people, and sometimes by God. So do not re respond or react to how people treat you as if it's a new thing. Look at it and say, the Lord warned me about people. And some of the people who attack you is because of ignorance. Later, they will be the same people who want to become your friends. So, look after the flock of God that the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the flock of God which he bought with his own blood. That's who you are in all the areas where God planted you. Don't look back. Don't look back. As long as I'm alive, I have your back. Don't worry. Focus on the work that's given to you, but grow the work. Use every gift God has given to you to make sure you are not stuck in one place. Do not take all the attitudes of people too seriously. Forgive very quickly. When believers say things out of ignorance and focus on the work. Don't deviate because of noises around you. Do not change because people have changed. Remain constant and consistent. So may God help you. Uh, I know I've seen where some of you are working. It's very tough. It's very difficult. But I want to tell you, 
the difficult things belong to us. If something is tough, that's what we are called for. And when we come to a place where things are impossible, that's where we are also called for. We do the difficult easily, and we do the impossible unbelievably. This is us. So ministers, do not look down on yourself. Others may look down on you. That's not your problem. The problem is when you look down on yourself. Others will undermine you. It's not a big problem. The big problem is when you undermine yourself. May God help us all. As we partake of this cup and this bread, I want to say to, to all of you, I appreciate you as <coughs> much. And I'm, I'm thankful to God of the progress you are making. And I don't want you to give up. Don't stop trying to improve. Don't stop trying. Don't be scared of the cost, the price you must pay for certain things. But the Lord is with you. And I pray for you all the time. And I pray for you by name. So I can pray for two hours. If I name you one by one in a problem to God, when I say amen, it will be two hours. Also. Oh Lord, bless them. No. Lord, I pray for them. Use this man and the calling, calling. Take five minutes with one person. Next time, what I pray for you. Whatever I know about you, what it reveals to me about you, I pray. Then I go to the next one. If I call you all by name, all the 35, 36 pastors, you see, I will call them by name and give them five minutes. When I say amen, to be how many times, how many hours? Maybe two hours or two and a half hours. And I found that to be my life. So on my side, I have your back. And I pray for you all the time. And I want you one day to show some growth. Now, lastly, the one thing that I decided not to accept any tithe from any member of the church, except to you, is delivery. I want you to learn how to manage the monies of the church. How you must manage it. Plus your own salary. I want you to feel like even the apostolic team, what I do with them, I don't hold any money. I make sure that these children receive the money, they know how much there is. And when it's finished, they know it's finished. So that we, there are no dark corners where something happened and then, no. So that they can learn to rely on God. And so as ministers, don't worry. The only thing you can do to increase the, the money is keep on producing money makers. That's all. And you produce money makers by getting more souls. The more members who are retained, then you put potential wealth makers. Then you train them and bless them. And they go and make wealth. Then the offering will increase, the tithe will increase, and then the pledge will increase. Why? Because there is, you are busy crafting makers of wealth. Don't undermine them. Bless them all the time. Some are just waiting for that blessing from your mouth, which says, you can. I pray for you. Go and do it. And they get up and do it, and they'll come back and thank you. So, don't be discouraged by the numbers, but do not sit down and be happy with the little numbers while out there there are millions that can come in. Have that soul to win souls. Have the vision to bring more people. The more the people, remember last time I said, the reason why there's lack of, of weddings, marriage in the, in the church is because there's few people to marry. In a, in a big church, a mega church, hey, there's too much fish there. Hey, they'll marry each other like the one's business. Because they don't have to travel to Western Cape to find a partner. They look around here, Ish, Isa, Isa, and they marry easily and quickly. So some of the guys say don't marry because they look around, they don't find enough option and they don't like the one they see. But as soon as there's more souls retained in the church, then it becomes easier for people to, to
to see visions. And then uh, they, they don't have to go far away to find someone they can marry. So what did they say? We operate in full house, operate in mega, that's where we are going. Slowly but surely, we are going there. In conclusion, one man, one man said, I don't, I don't think it's even a believer, I think it's uh, Mark Twain. He says, I may be walking slowly, but thank God I'm not walking backwards. So don't hate yourself because others are, are, seem to be going faster. As long as you are moving forward, it's not the speed that matters, it's direction that matters. Direction is more important than speed. If you are going in the wrong direction, keep going. But if you are running very fast, not knowing where you are going, please, you are going to end up in the sea where, the, where nobody can see you. So let us be strengthened and let us be encouraged. Can we have the, the items of the whole community come, please, to the table in front here so that we can, we, can, we can go into that? So I am very thankful for all of you who were able to come. And then uh, we are very, very thankful to God. And uh, sometimes my heart breaks. I wish I can do something for you. When I come to your area, I see uh, the circumstances under which you are waking. I, I really wish, I even tell God, I wish I could help this people and help them to achieve that. I mean, I go to stand back at Pastor, Pastor Franz, I see the, how you people, you really yearn to complete the building and the finances are not forthcoming. And I just say, Lord, if you can just enable me to do something and so they can complete. But I also know that one day in the future, you are going to thank God that he didn't give you some things when you wanted them. God did not give you some things when you wanted them. They kept you waiting at the right time when you knew that you were ready. He gave it to you. We are going to have our Passover the Moses way. Let's up on our feet. Our Lord, the Bible says, and as they were sitting at the table, the Lord took the bread. That is our Lord's posture. But the Exodus way says, put on your, clo your, your, your clothes, fasten your belt, wear your shoes, and you are going to eat in a hurry. Because this is the Passover of the Lord. We are the first people like the priest carrying the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible says when they crossed the Jordan River, it was the, 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 the carriers of the Ark who were moving ahead. And that was standing the river of crossing. The whole of the CWC is crossing to the next level. And we are the Ark bearers. We are crossing first. If between now, CWC now, and CWC the next level, it will take our feet to stand in the middle of the river. And so the water will stop because of our feet. Then the people will want to cross when they see what we have done. So this is us saying to God, Lord, we thank you for inviting us and making us part of the next level. And we are, we are acknowledging which we are the ones who are carrying Mpongo. And behind us are millions of people. Many of them are not sure whether we'll make it or not. Some have given up and they say it's a joke, like what we are joking, they're going nowhere. But it's normal, Bazawa. The people who are leading, 20% are walking. 80% are hiking, sitting in the trailer, and 20% is carrying 80%. Look after the 20%. Train them, pour, pour yourself into them, and you will realize God is very wise. Let's bow heads and pray. 
Holy Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, first we dedicate ourselves to you, our lives to you, as ministers, it was not our choice, it was your choice. Ours, it was obedience. You chose us. Such imperfect creatures that we are. Yet, as David said, what is man that you consider him so much? Son of man that you visit him. You made him a little lower than yourself, but crowned him with glory and honor and made him overseer of the works of your hands. How excellent is your name, O Lord, our God. Jesus. Now, fathers, we stand here today. The number is not 100%. Only two-thirds of the whole team is here, and the other third could not make it. Now, Lord, I pray for another concession, the one you gave to Moses that other time. When two could not attend the convocation, and they were in the fields, when the anointing came down, the two were numbered and they began to prophesy. Therefore, Lord, I pray that those ministers who could not make it into this conference and they are part of us, we are not excluding them. Whatever blessing and anointing, whatever equipment you were receiving today, they also it shall catch them and raise them up. In Christ's mighty name, now I bless this bread and I bless this cup. We receive it as men and women about to go to the next level. We have crossed the Red Sea already, Lord. Now the Jordan stands between us and the next level. We thank you that for such a time as this, 